Joining me now from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram is Stephen Johnson, who covers TCU and is a beat writer for this team. Stephen, we've been previewing what we're going to see this weekend in the college football playoffs. Thanks for being with us to break down TCU. Hey, no problem. I appreciate the invite. So let's just start with the job that Sonny Dykes has done. A lot of people didn't project this team to make it this far. Preseason projections didn't even really have them near the top in the conference. What can you say about the job that he's done bringing this team as far as he has? Well, I think Sonny would say it's all about the players, honestly. He he came in with a unique approach in my mind. Uh, coming in, you know, in college football, the coaches are kind of the quote-unquote stars. But he wanted TCU to be defined by the players. So when he came in, I think last November, last December, he said the buy-in was almost immediate. One of the first things he and his wife did was just kind of went around DFW area to just go check in and really just check on the mental uh, the mental health of some of the players that were going to be on this roster. And I think that's just one example of how he's kind of quickly connected with the roster. So honestly, man, he, they just have a very simple mantra, just do your job. It's simple, but it's really resonated with the team, and they've seen it play out. They know if they do their job, then nine times out of 10, or at least 12 times out of 13 this, uh, this season, that the odds are going to be in their favor. So he, he's been a great addition to the uh, program. And I think in a year that we saw LSU, USC, Florida – get new coaches. His hire went under the radar, but I think as of right now, you could argue it's probably one of the best hires that made from last cycle. Yeah, he's not sneaking up on anybody anymore. And that mantra of just doing your job is simple, but it's what the Patriots echoed in that span where they won numerous Super Bowls. It's what a lot of teams say, you know, taking it one week at a time. I imagine it's been very difficult to, to do that in the run up to this playoff. If they can beat Michigan, what would that mean to this to the university? I think it would it would mean everything, man. For it would just be kind of the season obviously wouldn't be over, but just to think that you were picked to finish seventh in the Big Twelve, didn't receive a single vote in the AP top twenty five, and all all season people have just been waiting like you guys are a good story. All right, you guys can go ahead and lose, but it kept winning, kept winning, kept winning. Even the loss to Kansas State, they came within an inch of winning that game. So I think beating Michigan. TCU is no stranger to being in these games. You know, they were in the Rose Bowl uh, a decade or so ago, and they beat Wisconsin. Um, they smoked Ole Miss a couple years ago. So they faced, quote-unquote, giants before and have been successful in doing it. So it wouldn't be new territory. But I think getting in that first playoff game and being in that national championship game, I think for a lot of TCU fans, I think it would be – um, and the example of them arriving, you know, Oklahoma and Texas are about to lead the Big 12. So for them, they can see themselves at the top of the Big 12. And, you know, when the playoff is fans, I think a lot of TCU fans are going to start thinking, why can't we be back here in a couple of years competing for another national championship? Yeah. And to that end, to be the first Texas based team to make the college football playoff, what's the significance of that moving forward for recruiting for everything? Well, in terms of recruiting, TCU as of today, they're on pace to have their best, or their highest ranked recruiting class ever. In the transfer portal, they brought in four SEC guys, if, if I remember correctly. And three of those guys were, we're talking starters at, you know, LSU, Florida, Alabama. So they're already seeing the impact. And I think in terms of Texas, TCU has a very strong case right now. They're not the biggest brand. They're not the biggest school. But you can make the case they're the best program in Texas. And they kind of have been – Really, since Gary Patterson kind of got this thing rolling and Sonny has kind of maintained that. So so for them, I think they really feel like they're the premier program in Texas. And now that you got Texas leaving to go to the SEC, they think they're going to be the premier program in the Big 12. And they kind of they're branding themselves as DFW's Big 12 team saying, hey, not only can we be the top of the Big 12, we're in the, one of the biggest markets in the country, one of the best recruiting um recruiting grounds in the country as well, too. So they're really playing that up. And just the fact that they're the first team in Texas only helping them out now. To make it this far, have they already done enough for those inside the college football world to earn the respect that they deserve? Probably not. Uh, a lot of I think there's an expectation that Michigan's going to come into Saturday and just kind of roll them. And you already know if TCU gets down, let's say, 10 points, 14 points, I can guarantee you some of the first tweets, uh, we, we knew they were frauds, we knew they didn't belong, we were Al they should have put Alabama in. So I think the respect still needs to be earned in a sense uh, – let me put it to you like this. I think if you're a, a real college football fan, just have an appreciation of the game, appreciation of the sport, then you respect what TCU's done with their offense, with their defense, with their story. But if you're kind of like an SEC fanboy, Big Ten fanboy, then they, they probably still have some, some more things to prove to the country.
Listen, it's not going to be an easy game to win, not that it's impossible, but Michigan does come into the game with a vaunted defense that has impressed uh, many times this season. What do you think is going to be the key to that for TCU? I think it's going to, I think a lot of people are going to focus on Matt Duggan and how he attacks it, but I think the biggest player, the X factor, I should say, is going to be Kendra Miller. I think he's one of the best running backs in the country that people don't talk about enough. Over 1,300 yards, he scored a touchdown in every single game. Um, if he scores one against Michigan, they get to the national championship game. I think he would either tie or he would approach Ladainian Tomlinson's uh, TCU record of touchdowns in consecutive games. So that's just an example of how productive he is. I think if I have it right, Michigan's only allowed one running back to have over 100 yards, and it was against Illinois, of course, their toughest game of the year. So if Kendra Miller and that offensive line can kind of attack that defensive front and Kendra goes over 100 yards, I think that means TCU probably wins this game, if I'm being honest. Their past defense, I feel like, also has been maybe the most underappreciated aspect of their game. I mean, is it possible that they can make Michigan one-dimensional, force them to to run the ball, too? Mm -hmm. Well, I think if you're TCU, they want to take the run game away from Michigan. They want to make J.J. McCarthy be the one to beat them. They have a lot of confidence in their secondary. Travis Hodges Tomlinson, LT's nephew, uh, was a Jim Thorpe Award winner. Josh Noon was another guy they brought over from Louisiana Monroe. He was an all-Big 12 corner. So they have a lot of confidence in, in those guys. So they feel they can keep kind of take Donovan Edwards out of the game, keep him at or under 100 yards, and make J.J. be the one to beat him. Um, he's very talented, very athletic, obviously a former five-star kid. But just if you go, just go through his season, you can tell he's a young player. He's had a couple games where he's tossed some turnovers, had a couple games where he hasn't completed 50% of his passes. So I think the key, if they can take away the ground game, they think they, they can force a couple turnovers or some mistakes by J.J. and capitalize off those. So I'm just looking at some numbers here from Duggan this season. Uh, more than 3,000 yards passing, 30 touchdowns to four interception ratio. A fascinating story as well with him, you know, earning this spot at a starter as a starter, working his way through training camp. I mean, what do you think has been the key to his productivity this season? Um, everybody says confidence. Uh, last, the last couple, three years, so he, he would show flashes. Obviously, he has the athleticism, he has the talent. But I think a lot of people thought he might have plateaued under Gary Patterson. So when this year happens, obviously he doesn't win the starting job and it takes an injury for him to get back on the field. But once he got back on there, he's just playing with a lot more confidence. And that's the thing he said, his dad said, Sonny, offensive coordinator, Gary Riley, they all said that. You can see you can see it on the field, man. He's, he's made strides in terms of his accuracy, his touch over, over the middle of the field, man. And when he's locked in, he can make some really good pro throws. So I just think that confidence and just the fact that He's just the ultimate teammate, and he's just kind of been leaning on that. Even when he didn't win the job, he was still locked in. So when he got bumped back up into the starting lineup, there was no uh, – it was just an easy transition to him. Obviously, he has a lot of experience. So I would say experience, confidence, and, man, his just love – his love of the school, man. He is literally – I was talking to a coach earlier. He said Max Duggan will sacrifice anything to win a football game, and we saw that against Kansas State, and we've seen it all year. So those would be some of the traits I think have kind of defined his season. Reminds me a little bit of the Jets, Mike White, right? I mean, their offense was stuttering a little bit, but the guy goes out, <laughs> breaks his ribs a couple of times, earns the respect of the locker room immediately because he'll do anything and everything to get it done. And I feel like players like that earn the respect of the locker room quickly because they realize that it's bigger than the quarterback position. Has that been the case with, with Duggan at the school? Does he have the full respect and admiration of the locker room? 100%. Wes Harrison, offensive lineman, he told us a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, excuse me, he said he would die for Max Duggan. So that's just an example of how much they, they love that guy, man. Because when they see him, the, the three years started, that you know he doesn't win the job in fall camp, but he's still engaged, he's still involved, still a great teammate. I think it sent a message to the whole entire roster, man. Like, hey, whether you're the starter or the second or third string, hey, just do your job, man, and things will work out for you in your favor. So whether it's the old lineman, the defensive, uh, the defensive guys, Josh Newton, he, he he says Max is like a lion. You know what I mean? And everybody talks about his leadership, how he just really, he's it's never really about him. It's always about always about TCU, always about the team. Even when he was at the Heisman stuff, you could kind of tell he wasn't exactly comfortable with all the attention, individual attention that is, but he knew it was a good thing for not only the school, but also the team, just having all their stories out on ESPN and all these you know, national landscapes. So I would say definitely the, ro the roster loves it. We've touched on the run game a little bit. For those who aren't from, as familiar um, as you are with TCU, can you 
detail for us how balanced they are offensively and just where they're going to be looking to go against this Michigan team? Maybe a player or two that you think could also be an X factor um, that that people aren't necessarily thinking about. Well, I think in terms of balance, I would say TCU is as close as 50-50 as you can get. I think obviously they're technically an air raid offense, spread offense, so there might be a perception that they're going to throw the ball around uh, the field all game. But I think they're really predicated on the run game. They want to establish Kendra Miller, Amari Di Mercado. They want those guys to get rolling. It makes things so easy for Max Duggan. So um, even their even their spread team, this is going to be a team that wants to establish the ground game. They're not afraid to give Kendra and those other running backs 30 to 40 touches. Um in terms of individual players, Quentin Johnston is obviously going to be the big one. He's a potential first-round pick uh, for the NFL draft, almost an 1,000-yard receiver, 6'3", 6'4", explosive. He can take a curl route and turn it into a 50-yard gain. Um, people might know about him, but I think Darius Davis, who was kind of their slot punt returner, kick returner, another one of those guys that can just take a simple drag route and turn it into a 60-yard touchdown. He's healthier than he's been in, I think, some weeks. I think he missed the Iowa State game. Uh, was a little bit limited against Kansas State. So he's fully healthy now. And I think having him fully healthy, really, he really complements Quinn Johnston in the run game. So those would be the two guys I, w- I would kind of circle. Um, that sh- got to have big games for TCU if they want to p- uh, pull it up. Has there been any notion where you are of of Sonny maybe get trying to get too cute? I mean, I know you can't reinvent the wheel, and you mentioned how balanced they are, 50-50 split in the air and on the ground. Sometimes I feel like coaches fall into a trap, particularly when they're really trying to put their program, their recruiting stamp on the map of trying to do too much or get too cute in a big game like this. I mean, do you expect that they're going to try to do anything different, or do you think that they will remain true to what's worked for them so far? I think they'll remain true to who, who they've been. I was talking to Gary Riley the other day. Like they, their uh, philosophy this whole year is, so let's just do what our players do well. We don't need to come in and add 30 plays every week or try to, you know, out-scheme or just come up with these genius game, plan, game plans. Run what we run and run it at a high level, and it's going to work itself out. So I wouldn't expect to see a bunch of gadget plays and all that other stuff on Saturday. There will be times where TCU will try to get creative and maybe hit them with a double pass or something like that. But it's not really an offense, I would argue, really relies on trick plays and all those gadget plays and things like that. So I wouldn't expect to see a bunch of it because TCU, they feel confident that they can line up against Michigan and run their run their typical offense and come out on top. They don't feel like they need all the tricks and all the other things to really come out on top. So I would expect TCU to be the same team we've seen all year. And there have really only been maybe one or two times this year where I kind of felt like TC might have gotten a little bit too cute against West Virginia and obviously in the overtime loss against Kansas State, maybe taking the ball out of Max Duggan's hands. But overall, they've been pretty consistent in how they play and how they scheme. How close do you expect this game to be? I think TC will cover. I'm not sure where the line is at. I know I think it opened at nine and a half. It might be seven and a half right now. I think this is going to be a close game. And I think if you're TCU, if this game is close, I think Michigan prides itself on finishing strong as well, too. But TCU really likes what they can do in the second half. So if this is a close game at halftime, I think TCU is going to be the team that's going to be more comfortable in that second half. They've been in these battles. They've had to come back before. Michigan hasn't really been in those scenarios. So I think I'm not sure yet if, I, if I'm ready to predict TCU is going to win, but I think it's going to be a one-score, one-possession game. I know some of these semifinal games haven't been close, but I expect this one to be pretty close. Michigan does have the advantage, though, of being in this position before in terms of just being more widely recognized on the national stage, having these big games under their belt in the past. How how far does that go? Or does this TCU squad, from what you know about them, feel like they you feel like they can handle the moment? I think they can handle the moment. I think for, for them. I think they're always going to be comfortable when they're the underdogs. And obviously, a lot of people, they're they're not the big brand. A lot of the talks on Michigan, Jim Harbaugh. You can see it here at the media. TCU, they, they've had a nice group of media people going around doing for interviews. But when it's Michigan, obviously, it's, it seems like the room just doubles with, with people. So, um, so they like that underdog role. And I think for them, they can really just kind of focus and zero in on just coming out and trying to prove something. They don't have to worry about all the lights and all the, all the talk and the chatter. The only thing they hear is now that it's, once again, um, they're expected to kind of get rolled, get blown out by a bigger team like they did against Texas. So I think overall, just that underdog mentality is going to kind of help them um, in light of not having experience on the stage. Certainly takes a little bit of the pressure off. Steven, if they if they win this game, what will the reason be? And if they lose this game, what will the reason be? 
if they win this game, it'll be because Kendra Miller rushed for over 100 yards uh, and that J.J. McCarthy threw one or two interceptions. TCU's defense has done. They went on a streak, I think, of 11 straight games of forcing the turnover. So they want to get back to doing that. So they force a turnover and establish the ground game. I think they can come out on top. But if they lose, I think it'll be pretty much the same recipe people think is going to kind of play out. Donovan Edwards has a big game. They keep TCU's offense off the field, and they just kind of lean and lean on TCU. So those would be the two keys, I would think. Who do you think is their most significant player on the on the defense? Hmm. Significant. I, I think most people would say Junior Colson. Uh, we talked to him a little bit. Oh, TCU or Michigan? I'm sorry, TCU. Oh, that's a good question. Mm. It really feels like it's a, a unit. Um, Trey Hodges Thompson might be the biggest name, obviously, because he won the Thorpe Award and things like that. And obviously, he has some really good genes with LT. But honestly, there, there there are a lot of guys. Trey, Josh Newton, their linebacker core uh, of Johnny Hodges and, and D. Winters are two really good players as well, too. But the biggest guy for this game might be one of the safeties, Miller Bradford. He plays the nickel safety in that 3 5 defense. And he basically, Joe Gillespie, the defense coordinator, says he basically plays the most cerebral position on defense. He has to do everything, uh, cover be uh, be great and run support so if there if there's one player i think i would have to circle it'll probably be him miller bradford number 28 overall as a unit are they strongest in their secondary uh, do they are they going to potentially have some issues in the trenches maybe trying to slow michigan down or where do you think some some issues could be defensively well i think the biggest question is what their defensive line can do against michigan's offensive line obviously uh they were voted the best offensive line in the country for good reason but the thing with tcu is all season, their pass rush has probably been their biggest biggest weakness, but they've been pretty pretty solid against the run. So I, I feel a little bit better about that matchup. If this was a team with a great quarterback, great passing game, it would be kind of tough because TCU has really struggled to get after the quarterback at time when they only send three. But overall, they've been solid to decent against the run, depending on the opponent. Obviously, against Texas, they absolutely shut down B. John Robinson, who might be the best running back in the country. So the secondary is definitely the strength. I would definitely say that corners and the speed of the overall defense um, will probably be their strengths in terms of weaknesses. It's just, it comes out to the defensive line. Um, they're not the biggest out there. Dylan Horn is really good, and he's coming on strong these last couple of weeks. They're starting a true freshman at nose tackle in Dominic Williams in the middle. So he's going to have a very tough matchup, especially in that interior of Michigan's offensive line. So it's really going to come down to the defensive line because their linebackers, TCU's linebackers can run, they can hit. It'll just be about can that defensive line get penetration and keep those blockers off the linebackers. I know you cover the team, so it's kind of a tough question to ask. But, I mean, at this point in time, they're clearly the underdogs coming into this matchup, regardless of how talented they, they are, the skill positions. Do you – is your gut right now, Stephen, that this is going to be a competitive game, that this is a winnable game for TCU? Yeah, absolutely. TCU has a great shot at winning. I think, they'll, I think they will have a chance to win at the end of the game. Whether or not they pull it off, I'm not sure yet. But I'm fully expecting this could be a tight battle, man. I just think – TCU has a lot more talent than I think people anticipate. They're going to have five, six, seven guys drafted in the NFL. And I'm not just talking about Matt Dutton. Quentin Johnston, Trey Hodges, Tomlinson is going to get drafted. Um, I think Kendra Miller's an NFL back. Steve Avila is an All-American um, offensive lineman for there as well, too. So they have NFL talent across the board. Michigan might be a tad bit deeper, but there's not a big talent gap. I'm telling you, this isn't, this, this isn't the TCU that was in the Mountain West. They've been in the Big 12 for a while now. This, they're a legitimate Power 5 school. With a lot of four-star athletes, a lot of guys are going to go into the NFL. So I think they match up pretty well against Michigan. I think this is going to be a four-quarter battle. Huge moment for the team and job well done by the coaching staff and the players who they give the credit to. Steven, thank you so much for the insight. You have given me a lot to think about ahead of this matchup. Let me tell you, I appreciate it. Enjoy the game. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> 